Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. God bless you, Sister Lashonda. May we thank God for his goodness and his mercy on tonight. Thank God for another Tuesday night Bible study. Amen. We're going to give a few more, a little uh, time to come on. God bless you, Yolanda. Ron. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Man, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. God bless you, Ron Martin and Deacon Martin. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you, Deacon Rashad. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to just wait maybe another minute and we're going to get started. Amen. With what the Lord has given us for tonight. Amen. We hope that everybody had a blessed day. Amen. God bless you, Luana. Amen. Amen. It's a nice day, nice and sunny. Amen. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and get started as others come on. Amen. We're going to open with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for your goodness and mercy, for your loving kindness, for your grace and truth. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you are doing, and all that you're about to do. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that as we open your word, you would open our hearts, cause us to hear what your spirit will say to us this night. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Sherelle Martin. Amen. We're going to open with a scripture on tonight, Psalms 121. It says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer or allow thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Sister Karen. God bless you, um, the Harris's. God bless you, my friend. Alton McGriff, God bless you on tonight. Amen. And we praise God for his word on tonight. Amen. To let us know, amen, that God is with us and he will keep us, keep our feet from falling. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to get right into the word. Amen. Tonight we're going to be talking about a little bit about the matters of the mind that become issues of the heart. I had mentioned that, I believe, on Sunday. Amen. That's what we're going to deal with a little bit uh, on tonight because this is a very important subject in light of all that's going on in the world and the fact that um, there's so many distractions in the world and we have to be so careful, as we're going to see, um, to watch what we allow into our hearts because the Lord made it really clear to me that if I'm um, careful about what I allow into my heart, I never have to worry about what comes out of my mouth because the Bible said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, amen. So if I'm careful about what goes in, I don't have to worry about what comes out. Amen. And so we're going to deal with this subject a little bit on tonight. Amen. And our first scripture we want to go to 
is going to be actually just deal with the mind a little bit because we're saying matters of the mind become issues of the heart. And I, what I want to say on that is, you know, what really matters to us, what we meditate on, what we are constantly thinking about, those are the things that eventually, what, find their way into our heart. Because as I said, I believe Sunday, the mind is like the gateway to the heart. Amen. Everything that gets in the heart, it has to go through the mind, through one of our, our eye gate, our ear gate. Amen. But it it, it has to be um, filtered through the mind. And that's why it's so important that our minds be girded about with the truth and that we be very selective, amen, of what we allow ourselves to meditate on. And it's so easy to meditate on um, negative stuff, amen, but it takes effort to really meditate on positive things, on the Word of God, because the enemy, he would just bring just negative things to your mind all the time, even when you're not trying to think negative. He seeks to bring negative things into your heart. And that's why I um, mentioned sometime how important it is for us to get the revelation, even for a battery. You have to have a negative portal and a positive portal in order for that battery to battery to be empowered. Amen. And that's why it's so important that we stay positive because daily, what, is, what do we face with is a whole lot of negativity. But when you um, stay positive, all that negativity would do is empower you. I preached the message once, shake it off, pack it under your feet and let it take you higher. Amen. All the dirt, all the stuff, amen, that life may throw at you and people throw at you. You have to learn how to just shake that stuff off. Amen. And just pack it under your feet and watch how God will allow you to just keep going higher and higher. Amen. But let's go to a um, first scripture that I want to um, deal with a little bit. Amen. Has to do with the mind. Is Romans, very familiar passage, is Romans chapter 12. Let's go there. Right, quick, Romans chapter 12, amen. We're going to probably spend most of our time in Matthew 15, but let's go to Romans chapter 12. God bless you, Deacon Hutchison, Sister Hutchison. It says, Romans chapter 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, or just what we ought to do. Verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. God was just dealing with me on this today because our minds are like computers. Amen. And you know, you in order to um, uh, for a computer to function, it has to be programmed. And whatever you put in that computer, in that program, whatever program you program into that computer is the program that that computer is going to operate on. Amen. And so our minds are just like that. And this is what the Lord told me today. He said, you have to, and we've been talking about it. Amen. But we have to keep dealing with it because we have to really become doers of it. He says you have to um, deprogram your mind in order to reprogram. Amen. Sometimes you want to put in a new program, but there's an old program where that new program needs to go. Before you can put that old program in, what do you have to do? You have to take out the put the new program in. You have to take out that old program. And see, and that's what God is seeking to do. Even he was showing me through how he has us going through the Bible in a year. I've been so blessed as I read the word of God. My mind is being refreshed. Things that I knew, amen, he's refreshing, amen. I made up in my mind, I'm going to do it every year. I'm going through that Bible every year. Use that same um, thing to go through the Bible just to keep your mind refreshed on the things of God. 
because what we're seeking to do is get a new program. The word of God is the program that should be in our hearts and in our minds. Amen. And so it's so important that we understand that because he said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the what? Renewing. Amen. Getting back to the mind that I always say Adam had in the beginning. He lost that mind in, in the garden when, when God breathed in him the breath of life. He breathed his program. He breathed his holiness, his righteousness, his justice, his love, his peace, his joy. He breathed all of that into man. Man became a living soul and he was running on that program and he had um, fellowship with God. Amen. But when the enemy came in and, and um, con tricked Eve into conceiving his program, then it um, taught it the program of God. Amen. And so we've been trying to work our way back. And through Jesus Christ, it's finally we are finally able to get back to that place. Amen. But we got to do the work. We got to do the labor in order to get to that place. Amen. But he said, don't be conformed to this world through the uh, mediums of this world as the enemy seeks to keep us in a certain mindset through, um, I keep saying, through television, through YouTube, through Facebook, through all these different mediums. And these mediums are not necessarily in and of themselves evil, but it's what you are putting in your mind, what you are um, setting before your eyes what you are meditating on because what you watch, you will eventually what? You're going to meditate on it. You're going to think about it. Amen. One of the great men of God in the 20th century, Smith Wigglesworth, they said the first thing he did when he got up, I believe, was get in the Word. And the last thing he did when he um, before he went to sleep was get in the Word so that in the morning, his mind, what's, what was on his mind when he went to sleep is what's on his mind when he gets up. Amen. But the enemy, he tricks us into meditating on the wrong things so that the wrong things, what, get into our heart. And so that's why it's so important that as the Bible says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. And as I always say, the Lord spoke to me. The television wasn't even on. But he spoke to me and he said, that conforms you into its image. Amen. And let me use this as an example because um, all of this COVID-19 um, coverage, you can't hardly turn on the TV without seeing what? COVID-19, COVID-19. And what is it doing? What are they programming in the people's mind? They're programming fear. Amen. They're programming um uh, really, the, some people become depressed. And uh, I, I listened to one of the uh, heartbreaking testimonies the other day of a young man who said his son was a victim of COVID-19, even though he didn't have the, the virus. What ended up happening is, um, and I'm just going to condense the story very shortly, his son ended up hanging himself um, but it had to do with the whole fact that we sheltered in place. He was playing the game. He broke the um, the game, the monitor, and it's, it's other things to the story. But ended up, the young man hung himself over that. Amen. But that had to do with a lot of the just the programming that we are um, under. And what I want to say. Um, to us is that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and the power and of a sound mind. And in this time, we really need to be um, renewing our mind in the things of God, in the um, things of the spirit, so that we don't become, as the world, um, distressed and all of these different things. As the scripture that we opened up with said, I will lift up mine eyes to the hill, from whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord that made heaven and earth. Amen. But we have to remember, he said, our minds have to be renewed. We're going to tie this into the heart. 
But our minds have to be renewed. Why? Because matters of the mind, the things that matter to us, the things that we think about, the things that we meditate on, amen, eventually find themselves its way into our heart. And when it gets in our heart, what happens? It begins to come out of our mouth, amen. And I'm, and I'm seeing how the enemy, even how he works to try to keep you in a place of... Uh, of, uh, let me say, in a place of uh, anger because of things that people have done to you or um, different things like that. And you have to learn how, amen, to, to get control of your mind because he'll just have you. I mean, <laughs> it, it's funny because uh, the enemy, if I let him, He'll make me think about something that somebody did to me years and years ago. And I start meditating on that thing. And then he'll start having your, you think about, oh, you should have did this and you should have did that. And, and the next thing you know, you totally reliving that thing. And I mean, sometimes you start getting hot and all that. That's how the enemy gets control of your mind. Why? Because he wants to get control of your heart. And if you're not careful, you find yourself feeling some kind of way about that person. And that thing may happen when you were a young person in school. But you have to understand why it's so important that your mind be reprogrammed. Because it's like a computer. Amen. And, and here's the thing with that computer. Once you put something in that computer, you can... Once you um, um, put it out on that hard drive, you can push in certain buttons. And what? It'll come up. And the devil knows how to push our buttons. Amen. But we have to allow the word of God to cleanse our heart. I was telling God today. I said, Lord, give me a clean heart. I want all, all image, strife, jelly, everything just purged out of me. Because if it's not in me, as we're going to see in the scripture, it can't come out. Amen. So let's go to... Um, let, let me finish that. So it says, um, we're in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, how? By the renewing of the mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's why God wants us to get our minds renewed so that we can prove what is his good, acceptable, and perfect will. Amen. And the word of God is the manifestation of the will of God. You want to know what the will of God is? You get in his word. Amen. He, he, he reveals his will to us through his word. And as you fill your heart or fill your mind, first of all, with the word, the Bible said be renewed in one place in the spirit of your mind or the heart of your mind. That's when the, the, the thoughts go from just up here to the heart. That's what we're seeking to get because, as we were saying, matters of the mind, what we are thinking about, what we are meditating on, what we set before us. And that's why I'm striving to keep that word before me. Amen. So that um, one, one place in the 16th number of Psalms, the psalmist said, I have set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand. I shall not be moved. In another place, he said, meditate in the word day and night, night and day. We keep going over that, but that's something we have to be striving, not to just talk about, but striving to do. And I know it's a difficult task, but the more, the cleaner your heart get, the easier it is for you to do that. Amen. Let's look at some scriptures that pertain to the heart. Amen. Uh, first, I want to go to Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. Let's go there right quick. And we're going to begin reading at the fifth verse. Amen. Jeremiah 17, 5 and through 10. Look what it says. Thus saith the Lord, listen what it says. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and make it flesh his arm or his strength. And whose heart, listen what it says, whose heart departed from 
the Lord. Amen. Cursed is the man that trusteth in man and whose maketh flesh his arm or his strength and whose heart departed from the Lord. And where does that start? That starts in the mind. You know, the Lord was even dealing with me about how much faith we put in man. Amen. A lot of us, a lot of this stuff they're saying with the COVID, we just believe in what they're saying. A lot of it ain't even true. But we put faith because they say they're what? They're professionals. They say they're the um, uh, uh, professionals in the field and whatnot. And a lot of stuff, I promise you, they're telling, I was listening to some stuff today that they're saying is not true, but if they can get you to believe it, you're going to deal with it as if it is true. Amen. You going if you if they can get you to put your trust in them, even though the Bible says that uh, uh, when the psalmist said, "I said in my haste, all men are liars, all men are liars," and, and believe me when I tell you, it's a whole lot of lying going on. But because we trust them from a professional standpoint, we think, well, they the doctors, they the lawyers, so they know. You know what they know is often how to um, um, hoodwink and bamboozle you, amen, and get you to believe and to put your confidence in them. But what did the Bible say? Cursed is the man. And, and we thank God for the doctors. We thank God for them, amen. But we shouldn't put our confidence and our trust in them. We should put our confidence and our trust in God, amen, because God can't lie. It's not that he won't lie. God can't lie. Amen. And so we can put all of our hope and all of our trust in him. And the Bible said, in all our ways, do what? Acknowledge him. What did he say he'll do? He'll direct your path. If you acknowledge him, amen, he'll tell you even what doctor to go to and when you need to go to the doctor and when you don't. Because sometimes we spend money, amen, that we don't need to spend. Amen. Because just think about the woman with the issue of blood. If she would have went to Jesus first, Amen. She would have still had her little money, but she spent all her living going to the doctors because she had trust in them. She felt that if she could just get to the doctor, she'd be okay. And then by the time the doctor got through with her, she was poor. Amen. And still had her issue of blood. But when she put her trust in the Lord, what happened? He delivered her. And that's how we have to be. We have to go to God first because sometimes we run to to people first. But God said it's a curse that goes along with trusting in man. And the fact that you trust in God shows in that you go to him first. Amen. You acknowledge him in all your ways. He directs your path. He'll tell you what to do, what steps to take, what moves to make. But it says there, making flesh his arm as opposed to making God his arm. But it starts where? In the mind, in the way we think. Amen. That's why this word is so important. It says, verse 6, For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabit it. Watch this, verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. And, and with everything falling apart, man, like never before, we have to learn how to put all of our trust in God because he's promised to keep us alive even in famine. Amen. And as I say, he'll always tell you the truth. He'll lead you and guide you into what? All truth. Amen. So there's a blessing in putting your trust in the Lord. And the way we demonstrate we're putting our trust in the Lord, again, always acknowledging him, always seeking him, getting in his word. The psalmist said, Thy laws have I taken, your word have I taken as my counselor. Amen. And so we have to let the word of God counsel us and lead us and guide us into all truth. Amen. Not saying that he won't lead you to a man. He won't lead you to a woman. But let him lead you because he will always lead you to the right person. Verse 8. For he shall be like a tree. This is the one that... Um, the, the man that trusts in the Lord. He shall be like a tree 
planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river. And listen to what he said, and shall not see when the heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Why? Because she's like a tree planted by the river of water, always have an available water source. And when you put your, your trust in God, amen, you'll always have access well, to his spirit, his spirit of love, his spirit of power, his spirit of a sound mind. When you put your trust in him, amen, when you make him your hope, this is what it's saying. Amen. When, when you're meditating on his word, amen, and, and letting his thoughts, amen, uh, comfort you. And one, one scripture I like, it says, in the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. And I find that to be so true because sometimes I'm um, going through the day, and like I said, meditating on the word of God takes, um, uh, what do I want to say? If you're going to meditate on the word of God, you, you have to be focused. Amen. It, it takes, um, in other words, you're not just going to naturally meditate on the word of God unless you get your mind to that place. Because normally, if you are not purposed and meditating on the word of God, what will your mind normally do? It's going to drift to the things of this world. Amen. And sometimes we start out meditating on the word of God. And then when we come to ourselves, we done drifting. Amen. Because the end, that's the one thing the devil do not want us to do. Because he knows the peace that comes through God's word, no matter what we are going through. Amen. And so when we are putting our trust in him. So that's so important. And, and, and it's something that we have to continuously seek to accomplish. Okay, look at verse 9. This is what I wanted to get to. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The heart is deceitful above all things and not just wicked, but desperately wicked. Amen. You know, sometimes I had to correct folk because they're not saying amen and they're saying well. You know, I got a good heart. I I, I, I tell him, well, uh, that's not according to the word of God. Our heart is not good. Even um, when we try to do good, if, if Christ is not in your heart, um, you don't have a good heart. That's just the fact. We are born with bad hearts. We are born with heart condition. We are born with sin in our hearts. Amen. That's why we have to be born again. And once we've been born again, this is what I want us to get. When you are born again, now you have to grow in grace and you have to grow in the knowledge and in the things of God. You get born again, that ain't a, a, a sign of just to chill out. No, you have to. That's God is really just giving you power now to grow. Amen. And so, because um, I, I was thinking about um, dealing with perfection tonight, but the Lord let me. I want to get a little more um, um, focused when I uh, de deal with that because we want to get everything out of that we can. But he would just let me know. Um, we have to be conscious of are we growing in grace? Are we staying at the same level? Or are we backsliding? Are we losing? And so we, we have to be conscious because God wants us to be growing. Amen. But the heart is what? Deceitful. Desperately wicked. Yeah, your heart too. Amen. My heart. I thank God that um, I understand that because um, if I would follow the things of, of my carnal mind and my carnal heart, I'd be a mess. Amen. But I'm understanding why my heart has to be purified, why it has to be cleansed. And we're going to look at what comes from the heart. You might be a little surprised. Amen. But heart is desperately wicked. Uh, 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 is deceitful, full of deceit. That's why you can't trust your heart. That's why David said, he said to the Lord, he said, um, ask the Lord to search him. He said, and try my heart, try my reign. 
because he knew he couldn't trust his own heart. Amen. You can't trust your heart. Your heart will lie to you and tell you you're better than you really are. Amen. But when God search you by his spirit, he's going to tell you the truth. He's going to show you exactly where you are. You know why a lot of folk can't be delivered? Amen. Because they, they trust in their own heart. Don't trust in the Lord. Amen. God trying to show them that they're a mess and, and they constantly trying to point at somebody else. But we have to understand, the Bible said, my heart is desperately wicked. Amen. And that's why I have to be renewed. It has to be reprogrammed. If it's going to please God, it has to be reprogrammed. And it's a daily, constant thing that has to happen. But look at verse 10, and then we're going to look at uh, another scripture I have here. It says, I, the Lord, what? Search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his what? His ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Because not only out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, but out of the abundance of the heart, your flesh is going to act. Amen. That's why sometimes we can be thinking one thing. You can be thinking about doing the right thing and still do the wrong thing. You know I'm telling the truth. Amen. Amen. Something as simple as... As, and I'm going to tell off on myself. But something as simple as um, I tell myself because I have this habit of uh, on my route. As soon as I get on my route, it's a 7-Eleven. I got this bad habit I done um, fooled around and um, um, got back on that coffee. And I got this bad habit because I like to drink a little, uh, um, a little coffee with my sugar. And so... I, I say, not today. I'm not going to drink no coffee. And I be talking tough and big and strong. I'm not going to do no coffee today. Amen. And I be meaning not to. Amen. But that thing done got in my heart. Amen. Because sometimes I'm, I'm thinking I shouldn't be doing this while I'm doing it. Amen. Well, I'm getting me some of that coffee and it tastes good, but I know I shouldn't be doing it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What are you doing that you say you're not going to do? But you keep doing it. It's because it's where? In your heart. Get that revelation. Because when you get your heart right, amen, and you have to get the mind right first, amen. But as you get the mind right, then your heart is going to follow. And then your body, see, because that, that's what he said. Let me read that again. I, the Lord, do what? I search the heart. See, because some of us, we do the right thing for the wrong reason. Amen. You can do the right thing for the wrong reason and it be all together as if you were doing what? The wrong thing. Some of us, amen, we give, but why are we giving? See, we pray, but why are we praying? See, this is what Jesus was trying to get the Pharisees to see. He says, you um, pray to be seen of men. You fast to be seen of men. You give to be seen of men. Some of us, we use our gifts, what? To be glorified by men. You have to be careful of the very motivation of why you're doing what you do. Because if you're doing it for the wrong reason, God knows it. He knows your heart. The Bible said he knows the intent of the heart. That's what the Bible said concerning the Word of God. The Word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And is what? A discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Your intent got to be right. If what you're doing, if your intent ain't right, then what you're doing ain't right. Amen. But understand God is not just looking at what you do, but he's looking at why you do it. Amen. That's why the Bible says that um, some folk going to come to him in that day. And they said, didn't we, um, we cast out devils in your name? And we did many wonderful works in your name. And he's going to say, depart from me because your work was of iniquity. Why? Your intent wasn't right. I searched your heart and you had the wrong motivation. It wasn't, you, what you were doing was not motivated by love. It was motivated by a desire 
to be glorified of men. That's why I say, God, purge me of all that stuff. I don't want to seek glory from men. Amen. I want to seek the glory that comes from God alone. He told those Pharisees, he said, how can you believe that seek honor from men and seek not the honor that comes from God alone? Whatever we doing, we should be doing it to the glory of God. No other reason. Amen. Because we understand that what does he say? I search the heart. Why? I try the reins. I try the heart. Why? Even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. And I keep trying to remind us, trying to remind us that we're going to be judged by our works, saints of God, because ain't no need saying how much we love God, but we don't obey him. God going to judge you not by how much you tell, tell him you love him. He's going to judge you according to how much you show him you love him. Remember we, um, when was that Sunday? Was that Sunday? Ah. Uh, I think it was Sunday. But where in the 25th chapter of Matthews, where you have those on the left and those on the right, and he says to those on the right, in into the joy of the Lord, and because I was hungry, you fed me. He starts running off what? A list of things that they did. And he said, when did we see you at thirst and see you in prison? He said, when you did it to the least of these. And their motivation was right. You know how I know their motivation was right? Because they weren't even aware. They were just doing what they were supposed to do. Amen. And so trying to love him what? Their neighbor as themselves. And so he said, enter in. But he judged them according to their deed. And then he turned to those on the left and he judged them just the opposite because they did what? Just the opposite. But it was their deeds. Amen. Don't think you're going to get into heaven just because you telling God how much you're giving him lip service. We're going to see this. Amen. But Because I want us, I want us to, to get an understanding because it's going to be sad. Amen. To come to that day of judgment thinking you're okay and you're not. And there's so many in, in the house of God, around the house of God that is in that state. Amen. Think they're okay, but you're still fornicating. You're still lying. You're still cheating. You're still doing all these things. Where does this stuff come from? We're going to see in a minute. Okay. So he said, I search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man what according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Let me read this last one. It says, As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatches them not, so he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days and at his end shall be a fool. See, that's why you got to do things the right way. Amen. Let's go to um, Proverbs 4. And 23, right quick. Proverbs 4, 23. And then, let me see how much time we got. Then we're going to go to Matthews 4 and 23. What does it say? Let's start at verse... Let's start at verse 14. We're going to read down to 23. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fail, fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness. Eat the bread. And, and here it can be thoughts of wickedness. Okay, for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more to the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Let them not, dip. okay, verse 20. My son, attend to my words. And we're in Proverbs 4 and 20. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. 
Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them where? In the midst of thy heart. Keep my words in the midst of thy heart. Those that have been reading the daily readings as we're going through the Bible, have you noticed the theme? The theme is what? Obedience to the word of God. It's on every page virtually. That's what God is trying to really get us to see. But look what he said. Let me read that again, verse 21. Let them not, talking about the words of God, let them not depart from thine eyes. See, because we're reprogramming what? The mind. We're trying to get that thing in our hearts. We are meditating on the word. Amen. We And you got to fight for focus sometime. You got to fight to meditate sometime because the enemy is always going to try to put thoughts in your mind. But look what he says. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them where? In the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. Talking about the words of God. And health to all their flesh. Powerful. Look at verse 23, what we we're trying to do. Keep thine heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Out of it are the what? Issues. An issue is something that comes forth of something. Comes out of something. When he said she had an issue of blood, she was bleeding out. Amen. So he's saying keep your heart with all diligence because just as the blood comes out of the heart and it flows through the body, it, the heart pumps it to the body in order to keep everything functioning because you know if you lose that blood circulation in any part of your body, what happens? That part of the body dies just like what the, the, the spirit, it pumps the the the, the spirit Holy Ghost pumps the Spirit of God all through our being and keeping us alive with joy and peace. Amen. But he says, keep your heart. Guard it. That's what he's saying. With what? Diligence. Being careful what you're allowing in your eyes, what you're allowing in your ears. That little children's song we used to sing, be careful little eyes what you see. Be careful little ears what you hear. Amen. That ain't just a kid's song. Amen. We need to go back and hear what they're saying, we have to be careful what we're listening to. We have to be careful what we are allowing our eyes to see. So he said, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. How do we keep our heart? Well, we have to guard our heart by guarding our what? Mind. Watching what you're allowing yourself to think. Amen. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, because what the enemy seeks to do is build up a stronghold in your mind. Amen. And you can't, some of us can't get away from thinking about the wrong things. Why? We got a stronghold. And the word has to go in, tear down that stronghold. Amen. You got to tear it down so that the word can now, what, get in. You remember what they had to do in order to take over old Jericho? Amen. The walls had to come down. Amen. And some of us got some um, thoughts. Amen. And I want to say this because the Lord had me deal with a little bit before. Amen. Some of us are still suffering from things that happened to us when we were children. But the enemy has put up such a wall that the word can't get through. Amen. In order to what? Deliver us. Amen. And, and, and what God is saying right now, some of us need to forgive some folk. They might be dead, but you need to forgive them so you can be free. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says the word of God, he, he said, uh, uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but what? Mighty through God to the what? Pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Casting down imaginations. Look, I, I love this part. And every high thing, not some high things, God wants to cast down every high thing, anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. God wants to cast it down in your life. And then it says, and bringing into captivity every thought. Because when every thought comes into captivity, when your thoughts begin to be uh, of God, amen, what happens? That thing get in your heart. 
and then what comes out of you. So this is what he's saying. Guard the heart with diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Amen. When they used to tell us that, you know, we shouldn't watch certain things, shouldn't listen to certain things, they weren't just telling us um, telling us that stuff to try to uh, keep us from having fun. They were trying to keep us safe. Telling us to what? Guard our hearts. Amen. Watch what you're allowing in through your eye gate, through your ear gate. Okay. Let, let's go right here, right quick. We're going to spend the rest of our time here, I believe, because God wants to say something. Amen. Because God is in the process of getting us ready for his soon coming. How many believe God is soon to come? Jesus Christ is soon to come. Amen. I was listening to something somebody sent me today. And uh, I preach, I might pray it, play it Sunday because it was powerful. It just helping us to see stuff that I've been saying, but he puts it in a way that makes it crystal clear what they are doing. Amen. And, and, and like I say, we have to see it from God's perspective because God is yet in control. Amen. I was reading in Colossians where it was saying that Jesus Christ is the head of all principality and power. And that just so blessed me because that let me know. Because the Bible said we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and powers. But Jesus is the head of all principality and powers. The good angels and the bad angels, they have to bow down to him. And that lets us know we don't have anything to worry about as long as we walk in obedience to his word. Amen. He's going to keep us. Let's go to Matthew 15 right quick. And God's going to speak some stuff to us out of this. Amen. Let's see how much time I got. Let, let me start. What I want to do is start at verse 1. But I'm not going to commentate on everything, but I want to start at verse 1. to Give it some context and for us to see it. Amen. It says, then came to Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, because you know, um, uh, I had a pastor, Elder Billy. He used to always say, the spirit of the Pharisees have never died. Amen. The spirit, the Pharisees died, but he said the spirit of them is never, it ain't never died. And it hasn't, you know, because you still got a lot of hypocrites in the church today. That's the spirit of the Pharisee. But watch what Jesus is saying about it. Because, see, it's important that we deal with this because we don't want to be hypocritical. We don't want to have that spirit working in us. Look what he says. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, now watch this. Pharisees, when they came to Jesus, they weren't coming to be taught. They were coming to find fault. Amen. You have to be careful with, with the, that Pharisee spirit because it's not seeking deliverance. It's trying to find fault. It's trying to put the light out, not get lit up. Amen. Look at verse 2. He said, why do thy disciples transgress? Watch this. The tradition of the elders. And maybe I shouldn't have went here. because this. Ooh. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. You know, we have to be so careful because we got a lot of just worldly traditions in the church. And I mean, folk get upset with you when you um, transgress one of these little uh, traditions. Amen. But they don't they don't have that same um, anger when, when folks is disobeying the word of God. See? Because we, if we are not careful, we can make our denominations into idols. Let me move on right here. It says, Why do they transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Look at verse 3. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? We have to be so careful that our tradition, I ain't saying it's necessarily wrong, Thing, anything wrong with certain traditions. But we have to be careful that our traditions don't cause us to transgress the law of God. 
Amen. I, I'm just going to say, well, I, I'm not going to deal with that that much because I'm trying to get somewhere else. But that's why I said maybe I shouldn't have touched on this. But he said, look at verse 4. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curses father or mother, let him die to death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be um, profited by me, and honor if not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Because um, what, what, what the law was saying, you know, as the, your, your parents take care of you when you're young, but as they get old, you have to sometimes, what? Honor them. Take care of them. They might need a little financial assistance or whatever it is. Um, and so, but, but, but watch what the Pharisees said. See? Because they were covetous, the Bible said. But what, what, what did they say? They said, as long as you just say, well, um, it's a gift. It's something that I, I, I have for God. So I can't honor my parents with it. So he said, okay, that's what they were saying. So let me read verse 6 again. Honor not his father or his mother, because they said it's a gift. He shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of what? None effect by your traditions. We have to be so careful that we don't make the commandments of God of none effect by our traditions. Amen. The word of God has to always take precedent over our traditions. Amen. What did he call in verse 7? Ye hypocrites, well did Elias prophesy of you, saying, This people drive nigh to me, watch this, with their mouth, and honor me with their Lips, this is what I was talking about earlier, but their heart is far from me. Yeah, we, we testify. Um, thank God um, for being here. And thank God he is the head of my life. You're saying that with your mouth, but what does your lifestyle say? Does your lifestyle say he's the head of your life? Amen. This is what he's talking about. You honor me with your mouth and with your lips, but your heart, your heart, remember, out of the heart, the mouth speak, is what? Far from me. Amen. Look at verse 9. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of me. Amen. In vain. You just, a lot of the worship that goes on is in vain. Amen. I never forget um, Bishop Chandler Owens when he um, was the uh, presiding bishop. He came to Ephesians and the message he preached and, and, and he know because he was up there. But he preached from that passage where Jesus came and um, looking for fruit but he only found leaves. Amen. And he cursed the tree. Why? Because it had leaves, but it didn't have no fruit. And, and he said, amen, and he was presiding bishop at that time. He said, most of what we do in this church ain't none but leaves. I didn't say it, he said it. And it's in vain. Amen. We want to make sure that when we worship God, we worship him what in spirit and in truth, because that's the only worship. He's going to accept. He don't care how good you can sing. He don't care how good you can play. If your heart ain't right, he ain't accepting it. Amen. We might, but he won't. Amen. He don't care how good you can teach. He don't care how good you can preach. You can preach until folk with no hair, hair stand up on their head. And he still ain't going to accept it. Because the heart ain't right. We got to get the revelation. Amen. Verse 10. And he called the multitude, said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth, because you eat with what? Unwashing hands. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Verse 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knoweth thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Why were they offended? Because they knew he spoke that against them. That's why, that's why a lot of times people get offended when they hear the word of God because they know where they are. They know they're hypocrite. If you ain't a hypocrite, when somebody preach about hypocrites, that shouldn't bother you. 
You should be thanking God. You ain't that. But when you hypocritin', that's going to hit you. It's going to offend you. But I still hear the Bible saying, blessed is he that is not offended in me. Amen. I don't get offended when God show me me. If I'm hypocrite, I don't get offended. I try to get right. <laughs> I thank him for letting me see me. I don't want to go to hell thinking I'm on my way to heaven and I'm so glad. I don't want to do that. Amen. God don't want you to do that. That's what we read in, in Sunday in, 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 in communion. He said, if we would judge ourselves, then we should not be judged. But the reason he judges us is so that we won't be condemned with the world. God don't want you to be condemned with the world, but it's only the word that keeps you from being condemned. Amen. Matters of the mind become what? See, and they were too caught up in, in, in the material things, in the things of this world. Amen. And, and, and the Bible even said, some of the leaders believed on Jesus, but they didn't confess him. Why? Because they were scared that if they confessed him, they'd be thrown out the synagogue. Throw me out the church because I'm going to confess him. Amen. <laughs> That's the mind you have to have. So look what he said. They said to him, he said, know ye not that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Look at verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father have not planted shall be rooted up. It's going to be rooted up. Amen. Look at verse 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Amen. And I'm saying, God help us. Because... Um, <laughs> So, sometimes I just say, Lord, have mercy on us. Because some of us would just follow blind folk. Amen. And folk. But if the blind lead the blind, and you won't be able to say, well, I would just follow my pastor. You better. Paul, Paul said it the best. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. And that's what I try to teach you at the Lord's house of prayer. Follow me as I follow Christ. Don't follow me blindly. What do I tell us? You get in the word. You see if what I'm saying is the truth. Amen. I thank God for Mother Wilson because um, she'll, she'll listen to the, to the message and then the next morning I'll get a text and she asking me about it. Why? Because she's being a Marine. She ain't just taking what I'm saying and, and just running. No, she searches it out. And, and remember, that's what Ella Turner used to say. Search it out. Make sure. Amen. Because what if I go off? If you just putting your trust in me, if I go off, you're going to go off with me. We're going to both go off the, the, the ledge. So he said, they're blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both are going to fall into the ditch. In verse 15, then answered Peter and said unto him, declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, are ye also yet without understanding? Watch this. Do not ye yet understand? that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth, and I want to say here, entered in at the what? The mind. Okay, I'm talking about physically here, but I'm, I'm talking about matters of the mind, issues of the heart. Whatsoever enters in at the mouth, goeth into the belly, and we're in Matthew 15 and verse 17, and is cast out into the drop, because when you eat, it comes out, the excess. This is what he's saying. So even if you didn't wash your hand, it's going to purge the meat out. This is what he's saying. We'll say, whatever goes in the mouth comes out, what? At the belly and cats into the drought. Verse 18, but watch this. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from what? The heart. And they defile the man. So what is he saying? The things that come out of the heart, issues out of the heart, what he says, those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. Issue, when he said proceed, that means to issue. Those things that issue out, the things that we say, issue out of the heart. Amen. And they defile the man. Now watch this, because this, this was powerful when the Lord showed me this. Um, Look what he says. 
For out of the heart proceed what? Evil thoughts. See? That's why you got to be careful what you're meditating on. What you're thinking about. Amen. What you watch. Sometimes we watch stuff on TV and that thing gets so ingrained in your head you can't hardly get loose from it. And you and you watch it over and over. Amen. Amen. You say, this is so a good movie. And it's full of all kind of evil stuff. You don't know what you're doing to your heart. Amen. That's why some people find it so hard to live safe. Amen. Sometimes, now, you know, uh, them old stinking soap operas. Amen. People wonder, I have so much, sometimes you single for have so much problem with your flesh, keeping your flesh under control because of what you what? Putting in the mind and what's getting in the heart. Amen. I went through that. But I once I started really getting my heart clean, then it wasn't as, it wasn't a big struggle to fight against the things that the enemy was trying to um get me to meditate on. But I mean at one point um because I was putting the wrong thing in. Amen. And and you all know and because I I I I I don't just I I, I preach on myself. I I Use myself as an example. When I went through that time, I'm not there now, not by any stretch of the imagination am I there now, but I went through a period where the enemy had snared me and was trying to get me just addicted to pornography. And I mean, um, I'll never forget when it, that first time and it was on, I wasn't looking for it. It came looking for me, but I wasn't ready for it when it came. See, that's why you got to prepare yourself because the devil coming. Amen. He coming and you got to be ready when he come. Amen. But he came, it came looking for me. I was on my, um, this was back in the day and the computers was kind of still new. And I was minding my own business on the computer. And he, that back when they had the pop-ups and something popped up. And I mean, I'll never forget. My little hand was shaking because my spirit said, don't do it. But my, and my little hand was shaking. But once I pushed that button, I was stuck. And, and I don't know how long I was there. And all them images. And I thought once I turned it off, that was it. But when I turned it off, you know what happened? Went to bed and the devil said, I got you now. Because what? I got something to work with. Amen. And he started bringing them images up. Amen. I'm on my job and he's bringing them images up. And because that thing conceived in my heart. And I had to fight. When I tell you I had to fight. And that's where some of us are right now. But I'm here to let you know, amen, that God is going to help you. But you have to hear what he's saying to you. That's why you got to renew your mind. Renew your mind because you got to, if you want your heart to be pure, you got to guard the mind. You got to get the word in your heart because when that word went down in me, it purged that pornography out. That desire, I don't even have a desire for it. I'm trying to tell you. And I'm not sitting, I would not lie to you. Amen. God is a deliverer. Amen. I don't care what you're addicted to. He can break the addiction. Amen. Um, um, Bishop Clean said Jesus is a habit breaker, but he breaks it. It starts where? Right here. That's why they have that saying in, in the addiction class. I wish I would have had it. I wasn't thinking about it, but it said, um, watch your thoughts because they become words watch your words because they become actions watch your actions because they become um habits basically watch your habits because it determines your destiny but where did it start even the world know it starts in the mind starts in the mind matters of the mind things that matter to you amen things that captivate your mind become what? Issues of the heart because it gets into your heart because you're what? Meditating on it. You're thinking about it. And you know what I've discovered? I'm not much of a yard person, but weeds grow without your assistance. Have you ever noticed that? Amen. Just, you don't have to do nothing. Amen. Don't have to do nothing. 
weeds grow. I got to go pull some today. I wish grass would grow like weeds, but that's not. You got to tend to grass. You got to tend to flowers, but you don't have to do nothing for weeds. They just grow. And this is what I'm trying, trying to get us to see. You ain't got to um, intentionally think about negative thoughts. They're going to come. But what you have to learn how to do is um, get the right thoughts in your heart, the right thoughts in your mind. Because watch what he says. For out of the heart proceed what? The first thing he says is evil thoughts. That's the first thing he says that come forth out of the heart when you don't guard it. Then what did he say? Out of the heart comes what? Murders. And remember, murder ain't um, killing somebody with a gun necessarily. The Bible said, if you are angry with your brother without a cause, you are a murderer. Get that revelation. Amen. Some of us hate folk and folk ain't never did a thing to us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Richard. He said, watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words. They become actions. Watch your actions. They become habits. Watch your habits. They become character. Watch your character. It becomes your destiny. Amen. Thank you, um, Deacon Rashad. Let me read that again. Watch your thoughts. They become words. Out of the abundance of the heart, what? The mouth speak. Watch your... See, that's why some of us can't stop cussing. We're looking at all that cussing on television, and it gets in our what? Our spirit. You got to get your spirit. I used to cuss like a sailor, but I ain't cussed in I don't know how long. Why? Because it ain't in me. But he says, watch your thoughts. They become words. Watch your words. They become actions. Watch your actions. They become habits. Watch your habits. They become character. Watch your character. It becomes your destiny. Amen. So meditate on the word of God day and night. Ask God to help you. He will. So he says, murders, and you could be a murderer without killing someone physically. Amen. Because if you hate your brother without a cause, if you're angry at your brother without a cause, ain't done nothing to you, just mad, just angry at him. The Bible said you are a murderer. And remember, God's going to judge us according to our what? Our deeds. And, and a lot of us kill a whole lot of folks in our minds. God deliver us today. Amen. But it, it's because we ain't, what, in control of our minds. That thing get in our heart. You wonder how folk can just go out and kill folk. They heart. They thought about it before they ever did it. But they didn't check them thoughts. They didn't get a new program. So they ended up carrying it out. Amen. Look what he says. Out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders. Look, look at this. Adulteries whether it's physical or spiritual. When we are idolaters, that's a form of spiritual adultery. Fornications, this comes from where? The heart. You can't stop fornicating. You can't stop committing adultery. This coming out of your heart because you ain't did what? <laughs> Amen. The Bible said about, about the people in Israel, he said you have, I, what he said, have eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. Because what is in your heart? Thefts come from where? The heart. False witness. Blasphemies come from where? The heart. And watch what he said in verse 20. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Amen. What defiles us is what comes out of our heart. And that's why we got to do, like I was saying, um, when we were talking about double-mindedness, we have to um, get rid of all to buy your stuff. Get rid of those negative thoughts. Get rid of all that. Amen. Confess them before God and, and ask Him to cleanse you of it. Amen. Get rid of it. Amen. Get rid of... The, the pornography, get rid of, and like I said, you got to throw out all your, your Tyler Perry movies. That's pornography. Amen. I know I just made somebody a little uncomfortable, but the fact is, amen. I didn't know what the picture was, but I was over someone's house and they was watching this picture. I said, I'm watching just because of some black folk. But on, 
on the thing and some of y'all that know which Tyler Perry movie this is. When it, the bunch of old men looking at this young lady with some Daisy Dukes on and they telling her to get them a soda because they know that she got to bend over to get the soda and they just um, lusting after in this Tyler Perry movie. That's pornography. Amen. That's what that is. I'm going to call it what it is. Amen. And so we got to get rid of that stuff. All that cussing, that stuff. Amen. Make me believe that that's Christian. It ain't Christian. Amen. Some folk, the, the have and have not. See, I ain't never seen a whole a whole thing of the have and have nots. God help you if you watch that. Because uh, I just watched the little... I heard somebody say something about it once, so I just went to see what it was about. They got everything. It's a smuggler's bog of sin in there. You got adultery. You got fornication. You got a, a homosexuality. You got cussing. You got all kind of stuff in that. Every evil deed that you can think about. And I was just watching the clips. I ain't never ate a whole episode of it. And some of y'all be having, be binging on it. Come on now. God trying to help us because we got to be ready when he come. And if this mind ain't ready, this heart ain't going to be ready and this body ain't going to be ready. Amen. So he said, out of the heart proceed what? Evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemy. These are the things that defile a man. Not eating with unwashing hands. Amen. And sometimes we go crazy. Somebody eating. Did you wash your hands? Let me ask you. Did you wash your heart? Did you wash your heart? Did you cleanse your mind? Amen. Who's going to abide in this tabernacle? Got to have clean hands and what? A pure heart. And so you got to check what matters to you. But you go to sleep meditating on. See, I got to check this thing constantly. Amen. I can't be I can't be more worried about what's in my bank account than what's in my heart account. What's in me. Amen. Do I have enough faith? Amen. To overcome. Amen. So that's so, you know. And my father used to always say, and he was talking about money, but I want to flip it. He would always say, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. And I agree with that. It's better to have faith and not need it than to need faith and not have it. Amen. We're going we're gonna to close on tonight. Amen. But I just wanted to share that with us. Amen. God is just stirring my heart. He's stirring my mind. And, and I want to be ready when he comes. Amen. And I'm, I'm just looking at the things that are going on. Amen. And, and, and I'm, I'm looking at them in light of what the Bible is saying. And it's telling me, amen, there's a storm out on the ocean. And it's moving this way. If your soul is not anchored, if your heart, your mind is not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Amen. But we thank God for you on tonight. Amen. And we're going to oh, we're gonna close tonight with a word of prayer. I just feel led to pray tonight. Amen. And then we're going we're gonna to close out. God bless you all. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your word. For your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. By it we are warned and in keeping of it. There is a great reward. God, we ask you to help us. Help us, Lord, to watch our thoughts. Oh, God, help us to watch our thoughts, Lord God. Help us to guard our hearts. Help us to understand, God, that what goes in the heart, what goes in is not the physically is not the issue. It's what comes out. It's what comes out. Help us to guard our hearts with diligence. For out of it flows the issues of life, out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. Lord, help us to renew our minds. Help us, Lord, to set your word always before us. Give us that hunger and thirst for righteousness and deliver us from a hunger and thirst for wickedness. 
We pray in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it right now because you said if we ask, it will be given. But we had to ask in faith, nothing wavering. We're not wavering tonight, but we are believing you, God, that what we are asking for right now, you're going to give it to us. A clean heart, a hunger and a thirst for righteousness that we might be filled. And Lord, we pray that you would give everyone a, a blessed sleep, Lord God, on tonight. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. God bless you. Lord bless. We'll see you again on Friday night. Amen.